Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us on another awesome Connecting Greeks episode. I am Ari. I am coming live from Boston, although I'm usually in D.C., but I'm in Boston right now. With me is my co-host, Foti Stamos. Say hello, Foti. Yes, sir. And the big man, my favorite guy, the most huggable guy in the universe. If you guys needed to know that, I'm telling you. <laughs> Angelo Tsarukas, all the way from Los Angeles. Say hello, Angelo. How are you? Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, great, what's great. Adi? Look at us. We're still, we haven't, uh, how do Greeks have a partnership and we haven't had a fight yet? That's because we're not it's, in person. Because uh, <laughs> you know why? You know why this is going to work, guys? You know why connecting Greeks works? Because we're connecting far away from each other. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're not we're a non-profit organization, so there's nothing to fight about. <laughs> we're non-profit. There's no money, so it's the only way we're going to get along here. Is there's no money. We're not making money, but we don't care. We're having a good time. So Angela, I don't care. Is. You could have you could have all my money, Angela. I love you. Don't worry. It's all right. You can have some of my debt if you want. <laughs> you, you know, but again, I'm excited. Look, I'm uh, you know every week we have guests, and we've we've had a real nice run. Of guests, but th this uh, this particular guest is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, she's um, uber talented, and uh, I've gotten to meet her. We, we're, we're friends. Uh, we've actually done a couple of shows together. She tours worldwide, and uh, super f uh, beautiful, talented, funny. I mean, everything you want, and. Uh, always proud of her greek heritage and and that's why i love her so let, let let's bring her on i'm very honored guys to bring on to the show my good friend and our, our amazing guest today the very talented ariana savalas oh that was that's so ariana. nice was that nice great, that was such a canadian introduction <laughs> was it you. Though, we, you know we're nice ariana you didn't even tell anybody i was a stripper it's so nice i, I didn't say that <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna get to that now what's up now, handsome i miss you how are you beautiful you're I'm now fantastic. You're, you're, you're in la yeah leave are it you? to like ha us having a pandemic for us to be in the same city but yes we're we're in the which same is, city now which is rare because i was telling i was telling you know we were talking about this and i was telling the guys that usually uh you know, we're both on the road we both yeah go to different places. And there was a time where we would connect or text and I'd say, where are you? And I'm like, I'm on a train in Germany or I'm on a safari in South Africa <laughs> or, you know, I'm hugging a koala and, you know, Karen's Australia or something. They make great, great audience members, you know, they're they, always they, stoned and just eating leaves. Now, <clears throat> now you're getting a lot, like Ariana, where you're getting a lot of attention on YouTube you know, you're, you got your new album that came out this year, Dead Dance. Yes, that's right? a story. We're coming back to that because we're going to come back to the coming dance. out it's again. It again. was yeah, it was it, very very long story. It came out the week that COVID was declared an international pandemic. Everything that, shut down that same week, so we decided this is not the time to start going. Hey, buy my record. It was a, such a horrendous time. We were like, we're just going to postpone it going to postpone the release and now it's going to be coming back still this year but just it's not only the singles out so far and it's amazing because it was the same it was that uh, literally that week that yeah. this happened and it's then insane. you know and i love i love the reviews you get you're the mistress of the moulin rouge you're the queen of burlesque <laughs> my mom wrote that <laughs> your mom wrote that and, of course, she and, loves motion. And, and the thing I see, and we're going to get back to, you know, Dead, uh, dead Dance. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing I noticed a lot lately, Ariana, because, you know, now we live in a very social media world of YouTube and Twitter. Postmodern jukebox. Like, you're killing it. And I've had people send me uh, uh, the clips of uh, Postmodern jukebox featuring yeah. you and a cast of other great performers. And I go, have you seen these? And people are like, suddenly, me, have you seen this? I go, yeah. <laughs> and I, 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 I do, I have seen this. And so it's, and you're, it's what's great about it is, uh, tell us a little bit about Postmodern Jukebox. How did this come about? Cause you're in it from ground level, am I right? 
Yeah, I was one of the pretty much original members of the of the group. Right. It was just us, like, you know, there were about five singers when we first started out. Now it's just become this massive thing. But yeah, I mean, it was a total accident. I was performing in, you know, cabarets around the country. And, you know, again, as a cabaret burlesque performer, it's, you know, it, it you can be very successful in that fishbowl. But you always think that your career is going to live and die in the 100 seat theater. That's just, uh -huh. you know, and it's like, because I obviously am obsessed with what I do. That was, I was like, great. That's as, that's as high as it's going to go. And I'm going to be so happy. I'm going to tour around everywhere I can. And then I was doing a show. Actually, the, the real story is uh, Dave, Ca do you know who Dave causes? He's an amazing saxophone player. Oh, he's yeah. won like I've a billion yeah, Grammys. Yeah. 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 He's going to Bill and Grace. So he's a friend of mine. I've performed with him a lot. And he came to my pajama pancake birthday party, which I forced him to wear pajamas to. <laughs> and uh, he brought the manager of PMJ to this birthday party. So every year I have a birthday party where I force everybody to wear pajamas and I make pancakes for like 50 people. So he walks in and I'm in a fucking leopard onesie, head to toe and a massive top hat. I'm like, come on in, it's great. Like, and this is how he met me. And uh, naturally he, uh, he uh, you know, gathered that I was a performer. And uh, then Dave came and, uh, and asked him to come see my show. So he brought him with me to my next performance here in Beverly Hills. And he goes, you know, you should really uh, be performing with my band PMJ. I think they would really, you know, and this was just at the sort of the advent of their um, of their online fame. Like they were getting these viral right. videos. You know, every video that they were getting was getting like a million hits, a couple of million. You know, it was like sort of at the beginning of this sort of massive thing. And I was like, oh shit, this is so cool. These people are doing like cabaret, but online. Like this is the strangest thing I've ever seen. So uh, I, it's funny actually. I wanted to work with them so badly, and I wanted to be a part of the band so badly that. When I talked to Scott, who's the originator of the uh, of the band, I told him, uh, yeah, I'd love to be, you know, I'd love to make a video with you guys. I said, yeah, I would love for you to do that. Next time you're in New York, hit me up uh, and we'll do a video. And I was like, oh, that's so crazy. You know, I'm actually gonna be in New York next week. Lies, 100%. <laughs> and he was like, oh, up. that's brilliant. Just come over on Thursday and we'll record a video. So I booked a flight to New York for the sole reason I just didn't want him to think that I was insane to just like fly over there to record a video but ended up working out pretty well because then I became one of the members of the group and that was at the beginning of it going boom I mean the next year we played Radio City Music Hall wow. the year before that that's we were awesome. playing 300 seat theaters and then it was like 6,000 seat theater it was insane oh, wow. so yeah I guess it was a good uh it was a good uh, decision mm. to book that flight but that's how it started you know, Ariana, your instincts are 100 percent because people are always saying, "What? what where, where do you get a break?" What? You know, and, and I love you how sharp you are. Breaks, You're like, well, I, "Isn't that funny? I'm going to be in New York next week." How and funny! It's like, I have no of idea. Of course, you're going to be in New York. <laughs> when a guy like that offers you something like that, I, I'm going to be there. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Well, Come and on. I didn't know what it was going to be. I just knew that you know, for cabaret singers, you know, you get a few hundred hits on your video, you're famous. It's like great, you know, praise God. But you know, I was just like, this is such cool music, and what they're doing is. So amazing idea from that video. What was actually going to come from that? I mean, nobody could have guessed. It was insane. Right. Now, yeah. what happened with the touring? Because like like everybody in live performance, the world came to a standstill. Mm -hmm. and, I and think what, you know I, what happened with touring, Angela. Well, Christ, I know. You were touring yeah. as much as I was. Yeah, Jesus. and it's done. Yeah. Uh, were you home when the, when the pandemic hit or were you on the road? I wasn't. Where were you, by the way? Were you? I was, this is weird. I was in Belize, Central America. Of course you were. And, <laughs> and then I flew, I flew to Miami and I went to Montreal and I had shows to do in like St. John, New Brunswick, Canada. Such a and then I love it. I, and I, <laughs> I woke up and they closed Parliament and they said they're going to close the borders. And I changed my ticket and flew back to LA. 
Oh my god! Not for and Canadians it was... though. Nobody cares about Canadians. No, <laughs> Canadian, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the international <laughs> passport. Like, all right, fine, come on. Yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> no one cares. And, and, and it's Friday the thirteenth is when I actually flew back. March Friday thirteenth, I flew back to L.A. Jesus. And that's it. Are you and superstitious? Now I've been, I don't. I, I think you know. I think for some people, I think thirteen is a good number for me. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you know, that's but good. I've been Be so my <laughs> my wardrobe now is uh, pajamas to sweatpants and sweatpants <laughs> back to pajamas. Nice. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I slept in this shirt. Uh, but yeah, I mean, to answer your question, I was in, I was in Germany. Um, so I was doing a six month residency in Hamburg. Um, so I was in right. Hamburg for like five, six months and we actually got to finish out our run. So our run finished like whatever that first, that second week of March was like, that was when, and then we were kind of hearing around Europe, things were getting bad, stuff was going down. We didn't really think much of it. Because Germany wasn't really hit, and then that week it was like boom, it was everything shut down, all the stores, all the rest. Of it. it was insane. And then my boyfriend is Dutch, uh, so he was going to come visit me. Uh, so he visited me in Germany, and then we were going to, um, you know, go to Amsterdam for a week and a half and visit his family after that, and then fly home together. And so when we're in Amsterdam, so I actually got to finish out my show, which was amazing. Um, but you could see like at the last week we were doing it, the crowd started getting a little nervous. The, you know, it wasn't as sold out as it was right. usually before, you know, but it was, you know, you wouldn't really think much of it. And then when we were in Amsterdam, uh, you know, they were like, what pandemic? I mean, it, it just hadn't hit the Netherlands at that point. Um, but then we got the travel ban. Right, so then the Trump administration was like, uh, anybody who isn't a US citizen, thank God my boyfriend has a green card. Otherwise we'd be, I'd be, you know, Zooming you from from the Netherlands right now. The Netherlands. Yes, from my with Netherlands. Your, with your wooden shoes and- With my clogs. Weed and <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I've spent many stocks over <laughs> my, my in Rotterdam. <laughs> <laughs> but the cheese is good, isn't it? I don't know. I'm allergic. You can't. Oh, you can't eat cheese, can you? Rashes. That's all the rashes. And yeah. gives I'm you the too runs. vain. I love cheese, but it gives me a lot of rashes, and I like feeling hot more than I like eating cheese. <laughs> so that wins, unfortunately. Hot <laughs> trumps uh, everything. That's awesome. Yeah, vanity is, is one of the seven vanity deadly sins, man. That's right. Oh yeah. But, it's, but you're right, though. <laughs> You're right. So, so let me ask you. So the yeah. postmodern jukebox, uh, because of I, I noticed online the video, the the amount of people watching it were starting to go to multiple million And you guys feature. So a lot of it sometimes is you're doing you're doing uh, music that was famous back in the '30s and '40s and '50s, right? We're doing a musical style that was famous, but we're actually, I think that the reason that it went so viral is we're actually taking modern music, like, well, I, I, modern music to me is like Madonna, but like modern music, <laughs> like, you know, Britney Spears. Okay, that's still 20 years old. Uh, who's like a current <laughs> person? Shit. Uh, Katy Perry. Katy Perry. Okay, is she even current? I don't think she's Taylor Swift. Yeah, we take like Taylor Swift songs, um, even stuff from the '90s, like Black Street and like all this crazy right. shit, and then we retrofy it, and so we make it sound like it was from the '20s right. or the '30s. Oh, cool. So the arrangements are all, you know, very retro, but the music is actually uh, modern music. So people maybe come for the the cover of their favorite Miley Cyrus song, but then you know it's put in a jazz arrangement that you know sinatra would write and it's it's pretty cool yeah oh that's really cool thank you but then about postmodern jukebox again it says it right there and it, and i got you know i I've, I've told people uh you know, i met ariana a few years ago we did a fundraiser here yeah in los angeles and uh and then you were doing a cabaret show in Beverly Hills and you, I was honored because you said, Angela, would you come and open, uh, do a spot oh, on my show? So fucking funny. And it was so, so funny. funny. And, and, and the thing I loved about you is that, you know, for everything you do, you, you really have a great sense of humor. And I know you're a comedy nerd. You love comedy. 
I love uh, comedy. I when people say I'm funny. I don't. It's never deliberate though. I like <laughs> I take my clothes off and people laugh. And usually that would be a nightmare for people, but that's usually how I've gotten paid. So that's pretty nice. So that's worked that's out pretty well. <laughs> yeah. But it was so funny because I remember doing that. Night. I brought some friends of mine. They said I, I said Ariana's doing the show. She's asked me to come and do a spot yeah. on her show. And I can't remember, it was in Beverly Hills. Vibrato. And, it was up in Vibrato. Herb Alpert's Vibrato. place. Up in Bel Air. And then, yeah, that's right. And, uh, and then we were there. And then uh, uh, Nicolette was there. You introduced me to her. So I want you to meet. And then Sheridan here's Ariana. Or my uh, Sheridan. <laughs> Sheridan. <laughs> Nicolette Sheridan. Pulled up the same name. Oh, good. Oh, Nicolette Sheridan. Nice. <laughs> right. Nicolette. And I think, I and, and, you? And, you, and you go, this is uh, Angela. I want you to meet this. And I thought to myself, this is, it's funny because it's in your world and you can see the people that you collect. And I thought this made you, to me, it was cooler. Cause I was like, and the thing I liked about, and that's why I was saying to the guys, I said, when you introduced me and you were like, this guy's a funny guy, he's Greek like me. Mm-hmm. And I always appreciated the fact that, you know, uh, you know, uh, you owned up, uh, to your Greek heritage, and, and because you know it's funny, I, I talked to whether they're people are Jewish or Italian. Mm-hmm. There's always self haters, you know, and I've, <laughs> I've worked with them, and especially that is and, a lo- that's a long line between the Jews, the Greeks, the Greeks, Italians, Italians whole, you know, whatever, a lot of Armenians. guilt, a lot of self loathing, a lot of overbearing mothers. I think oh, yeah. that that's right, right. And a lot of and, really and nice asses. I think that that's kind of what we all have in common. Juicy, it's just big, nice. nice. Just big. The, the, barely fit through a door it, ass, you know? It, 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 that's, you gotta good. love that. You, you gotta got love to. That. <laughs> but the thing is, is that I find it was interesting because, you know, um, when people, you're this now this is the funny, the, this guy's is, the story I'm going to say now is Greek. I always hang, hang out because I live out in the valley. I live close to the great Greek. Right, of course. And there's a guy there. My Gus. people. Yeah, the guys, the guys. So there's Gus. And we're talking. So I used to see him there all the time. Yeah. And we were talking, and he goes, uh, I said, uh, the owner saw us, the owner goes, what are you doing? I said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on Ariana Savalas has a show uh, on Friday night. If you guys want to, you know, I'm going to, I'm doing a spot on her show in Beverly Hills. And then there's this guy, Gus, who goes, uh, maybe I'll see you there. Maybe I'll see you there. Okay. And I've known him for like, couple of years now oh, that's hilarious and, and then we get there guys and then ariana grabs and goes oh angelo i want you to meet my uncle gus yes. <laughs> i'm going geez i go to and i go to malaka i've known you now for guys. you never told me you're ariana's uncle oh my god that's so cute <laughs> am he i right was the, unfortunately he passed away a few years ago yeah. but he was yeah. the like I mean, he and my dad, they were just like the, they were the heads of the family, man. I mean, like he was everything to us. Um, and you remember his big bellowing voice. I mean, he, he had a really like, deep voice. He had this big and he, you know, 96, I think we passed Unbelievable. away. Unbelievable. It looked like he was 60. He had a full head of white hair. It was insane. I mean, he was the most but amazing. The guy- Every waitress on the planet. <laughs> yeah. but you know ariana he's like it was 97 or 96 he looks 60 no i mean listen I, you know the the men in the savalas family like my dad died he was 72 when he died but he died of cancer but he also died of stubbornness because he didn't want to go to the doctor and if he went to the doctor i think he would have lived to like a thousand because there's such right. longevity in our family and they look exactly the same up until the day they die. Like when you look at old pictures of my uncle, he looked the same when he was 50 as he did when he was 95, maybe a few wow. more wrinkles here and there, but he didn't age. It's insane. I don't know. It's, it's, it's the, the Greek it's gene the, maybe. It's, it's all the, the Greek, well. it's, it's the Greek DNA yes. is what it is. <laughs> and I think we yes. agree. And I, I've said this to people, but it's so funny when he came up, he was so happy. Like, when I told him, he never said anything to me. Oh and then we God. went That's there so and cute. I go, I go to, to you're Ariana's uncle. <laughs> and I've talked to him for two years. And when I told him and he was there, but you know, he was so proud of you. Oh, he really was. He was and it's, the best and it, fan. He really was. And, and afterwards, and when I saw him after, he goes, you see? 
And I said to him, I goes, he goes, no, you know what he said to me? I wanted to see what you were going to say. I go, what are going to say? <laughs> I love her, man. What am I going to say? So it's such a typical, her. oh my God, typical Savalas. A little typical sneaker Typical Savalas self. thing. Sleep herself. <laughs> now, did you not, Ariana, did you not sing one of your dad's, did you do one of your dad's songs? Probably. When when you were there, I, you know, it's funny because my, my career took, like, it, there's, a, there's a very funny trajectory to, to my career. So I started out in the more jazz uh, world, um, doing like Sinatra, doing, you know, kind of Peggy Lee, Ella Fitzgerald, Julie London kind of stuff. And then, especially during that time, I love to sing uh, Hello, cutie pie. She wanted How's to see you. Hi. Say hi, Olivia. That's Ariana. Hi, I'm Olivia. Aren't you beautiful? How's it going? <laughs> you like, she is wanna... your dad, is he cool or is he kind of a dork? Yeah, is that cool or is he a dork? Put this in your ear. She can't hear you. Put it in your ear. Is, is your dad cool or is he kind of a nerd? Is that cool or a nerd? <laughs> I want to know. Nerd. <laughs> no, definitely <laughs> not closer. surprising. <laughs> I put her on; she wanted to see you. That hockey jersey isn't fooling anyone. <laughs> she, we're doing TikTok videos now, Ariana. This is the my oh world my now. Oh my god! This She's doing TikTok. Uh, these these young little whippersnappers, man. I can barely <laughs> oh, yeah. turn on my Facebook. Okay, here. Like it's all about the TikTok. <laughs> she goes, I'm not going to deny you are a nerd. It's that hair, Angelo. It's that meatloaf mullet you got. I, 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 you know what? Don't think I don't <laughs> notice it. Don't think I don't see it. Now. Dude, you're I'm slick that mullet. shit back. Dude, I see that little like rat tail. <laughs> don't think I'll let you get away with that shit. <laughs> I fucking love you. Dude, let me tell you something. I got. I have got COVID hair. I haven't done it. I want my like hockey, hockey. I knew you were going to blame it on COVID. I knew I have not. Blame it on COVID. Man, such a I have not, story. I have not cut my hair in eight <laughs> months. I've done nothing to it. I don't care. I love it. You know? I can just and see the wings. I see the, I wings, the wings. You know, I want, I want to have a hockey mullet. You know, the, remember in the '80s, the chicks dug it. You sort of oh look like God. you're like a spot, like you're like a sponsored race car driver for Monster. You know, and you're like gonna, <laughs> you're gonna like tell me that Trump isn't that bad, and it's, it's. <laughs> I don't know. Oh shit! Oh, man. He's nice. good for the economy. I don't know. It's like, he's, good for, you know he's good for economy. You know? <laughs> and when I took my sister on, that's out what that to haircut says. Rest, <laughs> it's just hilarious. Wait, you know what's funny? I, I, you know, I, I was on, a, I was on a ship. I was doing a, a cruise gig, uh, and doing shows. And I'm saying I'm out in the smoking area having a cigar, and yeah. I look like everybody from Missouri mm -hmm. or Kansas or Memphis. <laughs> so they come up to me and they go, where are you from? Now, what am I supposed to tell them? Do I tell them, oh, my parents are Greek immigrants who moved to Montreal. I ended up uh, moving to England, then to Los Angeles, married an Armenian woman. I'm Greek. Or do I just tell them? So like, is that white or is it like... <laughs> I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, okay. I don't know. We and lost it, our ethnic card a while ago. I don't know when it happened. Greeks used to be looked like my dad, like growing up when he was right. a kid, and then they moved to Garden City. Like they were like the immigrants that nobody wanted there, right? They were not right. the like white suburban people. They're like, oh, <laughs> the Greeks. What the hell are the Greeks doing here? Get them out of here. Like, get them out of here. Know, I don't know when we lost our ethnicity card, but I don't know. It's it's gone now. I'm a, I'm about as white as a ghost. But you know, I'll say this, and I've said this e even before I met you, and even to me, your father is a fucking legend. He is the oh, coolest Greek ever. I said, and, 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 and he is, and, and the reason I say that he was he he was a, a Levedis. He was a, a dude, man. All those movies he did, Kojak, everything. And I thought, and I th and somebody asked me once. I had to do this podcast, and they said, "If you could pick three people, you could hang out for for a day, oh my living God. or dead, who would they be?" And I, the first guy I said is Telly Savalas. Oh, I want to hang amazing. out with him. He'd be I my first two, actually. Vegas. So that's nice. <laughs> you know, and and, I, and you know, it was it was the first on my list, and Nostradamus. <laughs> was the second one you know that's a great choice and and, and then and no it's it's so funny because you're picking people historically but 
it's so true. I mean, when you when you look at it, because for a little country, which is little, I mean, there's only what twenty something million Greeks in the world. Yeah, there's a bigger impact. And what I remember one guy saying to me, "Well, Greek food sucks." I go, "Really?" And he's you Syrian. Suck. I yeah, you suck. I don't see uh, <laughs> the happy Syrian, but I always see the happy Greek when I go somewhere. But yeah, that's but I amazing. Think like, and what are you even say? Like, what do you not like? Like meat and vegetables? Like it's like yeah, every sorry. freaking like <laughs> paleo, right? It's paleo, which is <laughs> Greek super, for old. Right? It's Greek. It's Greek, it's Ariana. It's very you, very Greek. Do you find a lot of people? I, like for you, because like I look at you as an individual artist performer. On your own right, you are fucking talented. Like thank without you. a doubt, man. That took a minute, it. but thank you. I no, it took a minute. It, it took, took, took minute. maybe maybe seven years or so, but yeah, it, no, it but, finally happened. But I I know how hard you work. I oh, know how much you. time you put into it because everybody thinks this is easy. It's not. But do you find uh, <clears throat> a lot of times will people make the connection when they hear see you that who your father was? Is that never. does that help or negative? Never. No, happens. you know, in the be in the very beginning. So, you know, my mom used to say to me, and she's so right because I had a lot of imposter syndrome when I first started out in the business. I was just like, you know, having a dad who's literally a fucking legend. It's like, oh yeah. god, what the hell am he I is. doing here? I'm gonna go, you know, be a fucking accountant or something. It's just, you know, and. I would always feel bad. I would always think to myself, like any opportunity I have is probably just because people are curious about, you know, is my dad, you know, is my dad's talent in me? Or like, well, I don't know why they're coming to my shows. And, you know, because I'd have these shows and people would show up and I guarantee you that a lot of them, especially at the beginning of my career, were because they wanted to see if Telly Savalas' daughter sucked. Like, and I get that, right? Yeah. But my yeah. mom told me, she's like, listen, Ariana, like, you know, people are going to maybe come for your dad, but they're going to stay for you. You're never going to have more than one successful show just based on people's curiosity being satisfied about Telly Savalas' daughter. And then also, you know, with the, any of the first auditions I ever did. And so it's like, maybe your name will get you in the door, but if you suck, they're gonna kick you right back out anyway. You know, my dad's not, you know, Tom Cruise, who's still alive saying, I'm not gonna do your movie if you don't have my untalented daughter in your TV show. It just doesn't work that way. It's like, I think that, the, right. especially at the beginning of my career before I really proved myself, probably the first, um, you know, opportunities that I got were because casting directors were just totally curious and to see, you know, what I was even like and whatever. But, you know, I don't think that beyond that, it was something that people even put two and two together. Um, and it was, and, and I'm really grateful for that. You know, I don't think that anybody could say that, oh, you know, I just paved my way on my own. It's like, no, of course, like my dad left this enormous legacy. And even though he's not there making phone calls, am I going to say that I, you know, built myself up from, you know, absolutely nothing? Of course not. Right. But I also at a certain point had to stop feeling like a chump because I'm like, all right, that 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 kind of nepotism is only going to get you so far, and then your talent and your work ethic has got to take you the rest of the way. So, you know, forty laughs, and then I let myself just kind of get over it. But yeah, yeah, at the beginning, I think, especially because people would come up to me and go, "Your grandfather was the loveliest <laughs> man." I was like, <laughs> I used to watch him in that Kojak show. I'm like, you mean my dad? They're like, how old are you? <laughs> like, what the yeah. <laughs> so because he was 65 when he had me so wow. people never really I mean that's the thing it's like people really never even put that together so many times because like I was so much no one would ever think I was his kid maybe yeah. his grandkid but like nobody ever unless they really googled me would never even know that but but you know I, you made a great point because <clears throat> nepotism does play a big part in Hollywood yeah definitely. and and the thing is you know your dad being such a legend as you said but where I respect you and where I respect you as a talent is that I know the amount of work and, and dedication you've put into it, uh, you know, and, and whatever. And, and, and it's funny because we did a show guys in Hollywood and uh, Ariana just happened. We happened to both be in town at the same time. 
and you came to see our show at the Barnesville Gallery I Theater. I loved that show, <laughs> and you had an opening act in that. Kira show. Sultanovich. She's so funny. Oh funny. my! You both hilarious. Just, I was howling the whole time. It was hilarious. So people were coming up to me after the show, going, "Is that Ariana Savalas?" I said, "Yeah." <laughs> They're saying, and they go, "What is she doing at your show?" I go, "We're friends," <laughs> and they were like. You guys are friends? Yeah. She, she, it's fine. I said, you know, got to catch your show. It happened to be in town. And, and I know that, and uh, even, you know, Kira, who's hilarious, you know, she right. talks about her, you know, not having an epidural in Russia with her Russian mother and all that stuff that she does, which is She's fucking so hilarious. Funny. Oh, my, She's both funny. Of you were so funny. You got my Swiss ex-boyfriend. God knows that the Swiss have no fucking sense of humor. If, I can, <laughs> if you can make a stereotype about any people, and I know it's wrong, but tell me I'm wrong. Tell me you've ever done a show in Zurich, and that was the best show I that have, you've ever I done. I tell have. me that you weren't like, what the they're, fuck? They're like this. <laughs> they're like this. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's the weirdest place. I, I don't even I feel did. bad. I don't care. If I get if I get hate for this, I don't even give a shit. It's 100% true. <laughs> it's true. Even my ex-boyfriend, he's the nicest guy. He's so sweet. But Jesus, like, we could not have had, like, more different sense of humors on the planet. Like, I'd send him, so he's like, oh, yes, this is very funny. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but like even he was laughing i remember i took him to that show and even he was like i remember howling. it was so funny but it's, so it's they're very stoic aren't they oh, i find God. i don't know maybe the dutch are a little bit better but no, you know the, the, is amazing it's so that's fun. a great the place Swiss, they're so different God, they warn you when you do a show in switzerland because i'm a burlesque performer i have right. to go into the crowd and Right. make fun of people and laugh and bring them on stage it took me four tries to get a dude who wasn't having a full-blown panic attack to get up on my stage i was like guys i'm not gonna kill you i might i don't know i might straddle you to death but like it's really it's okay you can let go <laughs> i won't like, bite hard you gotta be able to like you know sometimes oh there's a sponsor on our show now we have a sponsor <laughs> Krispy Kreme donuts. That's not hiding your hair, no, Angelo. All right, they, just what else? <laughs> they gave it. You know, they gave this to me. I got Halloween donuts for my kid. Oh my god! And they gave me That's little amazing. hats. Look at my fat Greek head. It doesn't even fit on. It. <laughs> Shut you know, it's like. <laughs> you think that Krispy Kreme would make bigger hats? You would think. <laughs> yeah, right. You think? Have you, you know, you they're the not exactly selling like. <laughs> They're not selling kale, you know. <laughs> carrot sticks. It's like it's not. It's not a carrot stick shop. <laughs> and well, I'm curious. What was the yeah. worst? Where was the worst audience? Like, what country do you remember? Like, just the worst audience <clears throat> you've ever played, where you're like, there's I'm been, gonna kill myself. There's been two, and what happened was, and this is weird. This happened in Newcastle, England, at a place called the Hyena Comedy Club. Oh in Newcastle, God. England, and they had a they weren't selling tickets that week. They had a busload of German and Austrian tourists oh, that were geez. limited in English. And oh God, we were doing the jokes, and they weren't laughing, and they weren't, and they weren't, and they weren't laughing. Oh, and, and, we're, and I'm like, what's I, I, you know? You start self doubting yourself. Like this right, stuff works. Right. I know this stuff works. Right. And then the guy at the door goes, you know, those Geordies, they have a really thick accent. You can't even understand. The people in Newcastle, and we're talking like this one, the two, and you go to Missouri, goes, the people are coming in, they don't understand what you're saying. I'm like, I don't understand what you're saying. Oh, my God. Why are <laughs> you speaking God. English? <laughs> and I was speaking English. And it's Americans funny because, and Canadians speak the Queen's English, damn it. The Queen's <laughs> English. And I said to them, I said, look. It's the way it should have been spoken. <laughs> and you know what's funny? I said, they got, why aren't they laughing? He goes, oh, we forgot to tell you. He goes, they're Germans. Oh, no. What do you mean they're Germans? I go, wait, what? It, well, it was a we we did, it was a <laughs> quiet night, so we gave them free tickets. They thought they were seeing like you know some kind of puppetry of the penis or something. I don't oh know what they were expecting. God, they also myself, they're a hard crowd. Even when you speak German, they're hard to win over. When I was in doing my residency, like I was seeing jokes in German. I was speaking right. German half the show, and it's still like. <laughs> yeah they're very it very depends on where you are too because when you contains. get into the high it, you get into the like bigger cities and they're much more snooty you get into the like more rural areas they'll i mean they, they are just the funnest 
crowd on the planet. That's so they really enjoy it. A bunch of Germans and Austrians in Newcastle. Yeah, that sounds like it would suck. <laughs> the other show I can tell you was at Salmonwell Casino, Highland, California. Oh, no. 60 oh. miles out of LA. It's where Middle oh, Earth no. goes to play. It's where Middle Earth <laughs> goes Gollum's to play. there pulling the, oh, the and slot. It was, it, I'm telling you. And oh, it's, no. it, it was for Laugh Factory. It's a Wednesday night and it's a free show in the casino. So oh these God. people have lost all their money. Oh, uh, they don't give a fuck. And yeah. now they're coming. Yeah, and they're coming to shows, and it's like it's oh, no. forget. It's like Middle Earth, and then I'm walking on stage, and all you hear is na 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 na. You suck. <laughs> fuck <laughs> off. And I'm like, oh, it's great. This could be a great show. And it was That's amazing. twenty minutes of hell. And it, <laughs> happens. And it happens. It happens. Imagine that. But you're also naked. So yeah, that's, that's really fun. So like when you literally are just like a pow pow and you do your reveal and the people are like no. and like naked. the wives are like holding their husbands back. Of course. And everyone's scared. It's like yeah. Yeah, but hold on. You you, you look awesome. So I mean it's Thank not you. like it's just it's it's more them and that and the whole thing. Uh I, I think it's more it's more them than anything. Uh, you know, it comes- it's so rare that wives will be weird. Usually, it, 99% of the time, it's the opposite. It's the wives shoving their husband on stage going, fuck <laughs> with him. <laughs> yes. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Let That's me bring me the cord. Fun. Bring me the cord, honey, so I can plug it in. I'm down to 10% on my computer. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> the one, uh, the one on the wall here. Bring it, plug it in there and then plug it in so I can plug what it else? in there. I know she doesn't know. We have two. We have the iPad and the phone one. iPad. I want the iPad one. <laughs> Sorry, technical. <laughs> technical difficulty. <laughs> right in the middle of our talking. Bring me the cord. I'm looking at my cord. I'm like, am I person? No, it's not you. And, and give me that thing there, honey. Plug this into that thing, the extension cord. Okay. Daddy, Mr. Daddy could be a big blabbermouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, Plug your it in kids there. know you well. They say they sure do, don't they? That's, that's only you know. That's the only good thing about COVID. I've gotten to spend time with my daughter. That is so and nice no, that, that you that, look that, at that as a positive. I always see parents I, I, and like they're quarantined with their kids, and I'm like, how are I, there not more like child like deaths? I'm sure there's like during needed. COVID. Like, it's how are working. parents not just like fuck it? You, you hear a lot. <laughs> of like, I'm surprised. <laughs> Let me tell you, man, it's tested my marriage a few times. That's for I sure. can imagine. <laughs> you, you, How many kids like you have? You've got two kids, right? I got one, one daughter. You got one, one daughter. Da- I thought you had two one for Yeah, reason. just one that I know one. That you know of. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I, weird, weird story. Weird story at True. Uh, just before Christmas, my brother used to live in Gothenburg, Sweden. He was married oh. to a Swede. And then he, his feed, and he had broken up with his wife and he had a girlfriend. We just found out before Christmas last year that he has a 22 year old daughter Whoa. from Sweden. Oh, snap. And my brother goes, this Gotta girl love 23 contacted me, him. Man. <laughs> and, 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 and it turns out the girl never, Jenny, his ex girlfriend, never told my brother. And now he, I have a niece. Holy uh, smokes. The, uh, that tw- and so my daughter, who's, you know, a little comic, says to me, so daddy, is there any, do I have any brothers or sisters I don't know of? And I told her that she has a brother named Chad. Daddy was a virgin named- before he met mommy, so don't worry. <laughs> and I said, you have a brother named Chad who lives in the Yukon. Yeah, <laughs> This is so funny. <laughs> That's amazing. This- Dude, that happened to a friend of mine. A friend of mine who's in his, what, late 70s at this point, maybe even early 80s. Wow. He went like his entire life. All of a sudden, this chick calls him out of the blue and says, I don't want money, but I think you're my dad. And my mom slept with you at some festival, like some Woodstock kind of festival, like back in the 60s. And he's like, holy wow. shit. So they took a DNA test. He's, he's actually his daughter, and it was incredible because she didn't really have a big family. She only had her mom and her mom, I think was a little bit crazy. And so she never had a family. And then he has, he's like this massive Catholic. So he has like 
a 50,000 children. He has like 10 <laughs> actual kids. And then his kids have like 50 grandkids. It's just this massive Catholic family. So wow. she not only got a dad, but now she has like seven sisters and brothers and a bunch of cousins, like cousins for her kids to play with. Like, it's so cool. Like, it's amazing when that actually works out for the best when your dad's not some like crackhead who you like find <laughs> That's... on... 23 but, but, and me and you're like oh crap <laughs> like, but don't you horrible. find like with that 23 and me and covid like all these surprises you start finding out things about people yeah. people and, get and bored you, you go, what? that's what's happening people get bored and they're going online they're like oh they're who going online to? they start googling stuff online yeah. or they start doing math you ever notice especially with families they'll start doing math Math. So you were born when you were born, <laughs> and they got married. Uh, yeah, forget, 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 uh, forget, it. forget it. Yeah, it was a Greek wedding. I promise. Greek. Everything, <laughs> everything was right. Wedding. It was all done right. Nice Greek shirt. It was so funny. A friend of mine is getting married, and he is a total atheist. But because he's Greek Orthodox, his right. wife, who is very religious like she's very very christian she's just not greek orthodox has to get baptized for their atheist greek orthodox wedding just because they're having it in the church the, yeah. like the kid the priest is like wait but you have to get baptized like and he's like a total atheist they don't give a shit he's already been care. baptized they don't care it's so funny but, wow. isn't that funny though <laughs> like, uh, terrible man isn't yeah. it funny how the the uh, the Greek side always wins when it comes to these weddings? <laughs> it <Yeah. does. laughs> oh my, it does. it's the dominant gene, it man. Dominant. It is the red hair of like of gene. Yeah. Like you're if you have someone, one of your dads has red hair or something, you're gonna get it. <laughs> the the Greek gene's the same, you know. Amazing. It always is that way, and you. Know, yeah. I have friends, uh, whether the guy's Greek or the girl's Greek. And they always say this. They always say, ah, it doesn't matter. You know, we don't care. Yeah, you don't care really. until you have to get married to yeah. Greek person. And all of a exactly. sudden, it's over having Spanakopita. We're going to have, <laughs> we're going to Mykonos. You're, you're Greek, not planning you your Baptist. wedding. The in-laws are planning your wedding. <laughs> exactly. Because the they don't want you marrying some shiksa that doesn't care about Greek heritage. <laughs> so do you is there an equivalent not... in Greek for shiksa? Like, is uh, like... Well, shiksa kseni. Sandy. Sandy. Okay, right. Sandy, right? Right. right. Now, Ariana, let me ask you, have you had the opportunity to perform with your uh, in Greece? Yes, twice. It's been amazing. Okay. I was twice. Where, where, where did Athens. you perform? How did they like tell us? It was right. Oh my, it was fucking life changing. It was incredible because the crap. I mean, Greek people in general are just loud and funny. And then you go to actually Greece yeah, to people yeah. who are, you know, and then it was it was an incredible experience. I was I performed in Athens, and then I think we performed in uh, Thessaloniki. And nice, that's a nice was, city. Oh, it's amazing! Oh my god, well, I've been to Thessaloniki. I've been to all the islands, um, and then to Athens. But that was actually my first time in Athens. Was actually performing in Athens, uh, so wow. that was really cool. Because last time I was in Greece, we flew straight into Thessaloniki. Uh, cause I was right. already in Europe. Uh, but that was my first time in Athens. It was bomb. It was so amazing. Now, let me ask you, have you ever had the opportunity to go to where your father's family is from in Greece? I have not because you apparently need to drive and take a boat and then have a goat go to like some right. village. Okay, that's about right. Yeah, we're planning on it is the answer. So like, we always planned on it when we were kids. And then, you know, when my dad passed away, I think we just had a block about it. We just didn't want to go without him. It was just this right, weird thing. And then we just, years went on and we just never went. And so we always wanted to go specifically to Peloponni, um as right, a yeah. family. We wanted nice. to go as a family. And then it just never worked out with everybody in the family to go at the same time. And it's a big deal. It's not just like flying into Athens. Like you got to go and then you got to drive and then you got to, and there's no fucking street signs anywhere. Yeah. I swear to God, I don't know how anybody gets anywhere in Greece. It's insane. Like when I was in It's changed. Has it's changed. It? It has. In Mykonos, you can go, like, go to the house on the hill, take a left, oh, oh, you and know, the village, just baby. go on the, what the hell? It's insane. Because your dad's from South Peloponnese. My dad's from Sparta. So it's right, South. Right, you can South go Peloponnese. now 
Athens to Sparty uh, on the new roads in two hours and 15 minutes. Oh, well, that's nice. It's changed yeah, now, well, that but you're right. You still, yeah. you still get lost, but we went yeah. We went down to Mona Vasa and the castle and all stuff. And, oh, I'm, and I always tell people, look, at uh, all of Hollywood's going to Greece. The whole world's going to Greece. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. it's just a great place to go. Good place I mean, to I mean, be right now, I think, right? And, I don't know how it's going with I mean, COVID, but at least it's warm, you know? Well, believe it or not, they were for people, our people who are non-conformists, <laughs> don't tell me what to fucking do. I'm Greek, I know. I can't they were even ahead, imagine. They were ahead of the curve. They Good were for actually them. ahead of the curve, believe it or not. I I'm sad shocked. to say I'm shocked, but that is really great. Truth Everybody was shocked. I thought it was yeah. gonna be like, oh Greek, what are you talking about? With this <laughs> COVID virus, what a bunch of bullshit. Like, you know, so cool. I think everybody predicted it to go down. Just like Windex, like in the movie, yeah. you know, like in my big <laughs> fire, just spraying it everywhere. <laughs> but what is it like? What's COVID like for um for Photios and Aristides? <laughs> uh, what is what is? I mean, it's getting cold over on the East Coast. So, now. so for like, me, what's I'm... like there now? <laughs> I was in the middle of a move from Boston to DC. And um, when it first hit, uh, I got stuck in DC with none of my stuff, barely any clothes. And I was there for like six months with, with yeah. really nothing. And I just started recently in the last like two months to, to travel back and forth. So I'm slowly bringing more and more stuff down. Yeah, It was just, it was so okay. inconvenient. Just so well, and then like, I mean, can you, because in LA at least, like, you know, we just went out to our first restaurant like a week ago and right. it was like really socially disabled, like in somewhere like Boston or DC, like it's so cold. Well, the, the like, numbers, I, are they just shutting down or like yeah, what's happening? The, num the numbers are creeping again. So we're yeah. looking yeah. at the shutdown. Oh, oh Jesus. And that, that's happening in a lot of places, which yeah. unfortunately... We were saying right. just now that Greece did such a good job, but now Greece is joining like the rest of Europe with the numbers. Yeah, that's like uh, the Netherlands is the same way, man. It's like yeah. they were killing it. They and now it's there. I think they're like leading Europe in cases. So it's just yeah. like, what the hell? Mm. Well, it's COVID <laughs> fatigue, right? We're we're suffering from COVID fatigue now. People are fed up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you, you want to get this over with? Like, what the fuck? We're we're going through this. And it's like, I mean, our eight, eight months and we're yeah. in LA. At least, yeah. at least uh, today was 86. At least we go yeah. to the patio. And we live in paradise. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> bored. <laughs> like, <it's> like, <laughs> like those like those tone deaf celebrities that are like, this is a prison from their like $80 million. We went mansion. to an yeah. island and it was so difficult to have my birthday. Oh, on God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. First of all, like that Kim Kardashian thing is so like, why is anybody surprised? Everyone's like, cancel Kim Kardashian. Like, of all the things you're yeah. gonna fucking get mad at Kim Kardashian for. Yeah. Like, she's a party and oh, who cares? It's like, what else do you I love it. <laughs> now, Ariana, I, I heard, I don't know, uh, through a producer, were you being offered recently, or is this just my psychic? this coming out of here are you Please. not being offered a role to a, a play a lead in a movie is that fact or fiction the uh well it's technically <laughs> fact but right, it's right. never gonna happen i mean this like this covid thing has just put everything on hold so i mean it's it, there's a lot of like talks there's a lot of things nothing's actually a hundred percent yet there's no like it's not in production so it's not anything i could announce but yeah i mean i i'm focusing more exclusively on music um just because it's something i can do solitary <laughs> you know i can nice. i yeah. can write music on my own i can play music on my own uh you know you can't exactly do a show or make a film, uh, you know, a lot of, but I think that the movies are going to come back probably quicker Big than, time. than concerts. It's, it's cause at the very least you can, you know, you can test, you can COVID test. Um, a lot of these talk shows are, you know, testing everybody. And then, you know, if someone tests positive, they're doing contact tracing and stuff. So yeah. you can't do that. You know, I mean, look what happened with the, you know, the freaking, what was it, the White House uh, Rose Garden ceremony when all of them are packed in like sardines. Right, and, right. You know, they all got COVID. People. 
Yeah, and everybody got COVID. It's so funny. Talker. Oh, it's not funny. It's terrible, but it's like, yeah, sure. you but know, it's funny. At a, at a certain point, like, I'm glad it's no one died. That, now we can laugh because no one died and everyone's okay. But I yeah. laugh. Well, it's awesome. Well, I would like to see, <laughs> I would like to see. I think I think you'd be uh, I think you'd be awesome in a movie. You got you got a great personality. Oh, thank you. You got everything going, you know, and you're and you're hilarious. I, and that's why I love you. And <laughs> you know, you. we're 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 going to take it up. Now. An hour's gone by, believe it or not. I can't sit believe it. by with you. But what now? Give us for social media for people going to watch this. Yeah. Uh, where can they find you on social media? Give us all the listings and stuff. If you just put in Ariana Savalas, pretty much anywhere. It comes my up. face will be there yes if you don't go past okay. the fourth o in google please <laughs> lots of fat pictures from when i didn't know how to do my hair or my eyebrows i had a little mustache it was not good times <laughs> just you don't go past the but like whoever's watching this is just do do me a solid and just stay on the first two o's i look hot it's my regular social media don't go past that. Don't, don't go past that. Oh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll put all your we'll put all your good stuff uh, on the video and on the podcast. So yes. Oh, please do, please do. Find <laughs> the ones that have been really photoshopped. All these like natural beauty. Fuck that. No way. Give me my Photoshop. <laughs> Give me my Facetune. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> before we let you, before we let you go, forty, we do a little Greek quiz for oh. you. Just a, a mini Greek quiz. It's part of our show. <laughs> Malaka, man. <laughs> it's not most. Really this was not <laughs> part of the deal. <laughs> just, no, you dicks. We do it. <laughs> just to get so to know you, Ariana. That's all. It's, 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 no surprise. Oh, God. All right. Well, as long as it's not like no, no, it's not Greek, Greek that I know how to you know, speak. No, Greek, no, no, Greek no, that they no, forced no. me to learn to get my passport. That's no, it. No, no. As Greek I'd American. be like, I am getting passport for Greece. It's no, no. Very Do you have it? Do you have a Greek yes, passport? Thank God. Oh, man. good for you. Come November 3rd, that thing might come in handy. Shit. Yeah, no, no kidding. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. I'm so ready for this. So, so as you know, as Lay Greek Americans, we share a lot of common things that we like, dislike, things that are funny to us. But you know, we love food as Greeks, so we always like to ask all of our guests uh, your favorite and least favorite <laughs> Greek food. Oh, thank God! It's this kind of quiz. Okay, yeah. this is great. Favorite Greek food is baklava. Baklava. Mm, right. That's good. Least favorite Greek food. It's going to be harder. <laughs> That's Probably a good something like weird, like when they do like octopus stuff. Yeah. You know, like yeah. if it's not really grilled, if I, if I recognize it as an octopus, I don't want to eat it. I don't <laughs> want it to even, I don't want to see the things do that. I don't want to see the squiggles. <laughs> Cover it in bread, fine. But other than that, I don't want to know about it. All right, so baklava <laughs> and anything that's got tentacles. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. No Ursulas. <laughs> so you've, you've mentioned that you've been to Greece. You went to some great destinations, uh, mm -hmm. islands, the mainland. But if you could book, pick one place in Greece that you can spend the rest of your life, where would it be? Oh, man. That's a tough one. One place. Mykonos. Tough one. Mykonos. Mykonos. Nice. Because it's the best of both. You get a little bit of that relaxed Santorini vibe if you want, like your background. I think that's no that's not century it is um it yeah. is century yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, you yeah. Get sort of that relaxed vibe but then it's also like west hollywood gay boy madness too <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like it's just perfect combination of being so pretty and then also everybody's up till 10 in the morning getting blasted so you kind of get the best of the world yeah awesome. <laughs> that's awesome definitely making us wait so so, so there's, there's one more greek quiz question what year was the pythagorean theorem written no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. 17, <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> well, that's great. Ariana, thanks so much. Oh, uh, you're so welcome. Really I really appreciate you. you. Yeah, I love you. you. I'm happy you're on the show with us today. Uh, continued success. You continued too. success. I can't wait to actually see one of your shows and we'll see. in and then we're gonna, 35. We're, it's gonna be once great. this all gets settled down for sure, hon. Thanks Absolutely. again for coming uh, on the show Mwah. here and, and talking to us. Philakia. Philakia. Uh, so nice to meet you all too. Likewise. Thank Whoever you. else is on this fabulous Zoom <laughs> call. <laughs> Ari and Fuente. 
Thank you. <laughs> thank guys. you, Ariana. Thank you. Bye, Ariana. Yeah. Bye, Ariana. Of course. Take care, guys. All right. We want to thank Bye. everybody for watching, for listening, and uh, check out tomorrow for the video and the podcast. And we'll uh, connect all of Ariana's social media. Thank you so much. Thank you, Angelo. Thank you, Foti. Thank you, Ari. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.